This video is sponsored by Skull Candy. I've had the privilege of reviewing so many phones over the years that in hindsight, they fade into the background. I don't remember specs or which phone had what camera, or what processor, or even how many gigs of RAM. What I remember though about each device is a flagship memory that sticks out with that phone. Is this the phone that I used when my kids were born? Is that what I took the first photos of them walking with? And as the Galaxy Note 9 fades into the distance for the Note 10 to eventually come out, I wanted another flagship memory with that phone. I started my odyssey with the Note 9 on a road trip halfway across the country almost a year ago. And I wanted to bookend the Note 9 by taking my family to Disneyland to have my kids experience that, to see the rides, to go on things for the first time. So when I look back and I think about the Note 9, this is what'll stick out. Today, we're not gonna go to camp today. I'm sorry. We are actually going to go to Disneyland today. Yay! Yeah! So living in Southern California, we're like 25 minutes from Disneyland, but tickets are also super expensive. So we don't take our kids that often, maybe once or twice a year but they know the Galaxy's Edge opened. We kind of ran as fast as we could, and it looks amazing. It's open to the public now. It looks like you are, you know, on a galaxy far, far away. So when I hold the Note 9, and really any modern flagship phone, I'm in awe of how good the screen is. And maybe I seem like a broken record, but those screens never get old and I never get tired of looking at them. And the Note 9 being you know, last year's flagship phone, it's an incredible screen to look at. The colors are bright and vibrant. It's pretty good in outdoor visibility. Anything that I want to do on that screen looks amazing. It's not even scaled up to the highest resolution by default, but everything that I want to do on a phone, the screen is a portal and nothing looks better to me than a Samsung screen. The family had just gone to see Toy Story 4, so after that, we ran over to the Buzz Lightyear ride, which I've been on a million times. You shoot stuff. I took it as a chance to be indoors, have some air conditioning, and I ate my sandwich while we were in there, which was nice. The kids had a great time. Now, if you've been to an airport recently, you see some version of wireless headphones everywhere you go but they can be really expensive to get good quality audio into tiny little things coming out of your ears. Enter Indie from Skull Candy. These guys are $79.99 and give you some really awesome features that the competition doesn't. First, IP55, so if you go to the gym a lot and maybe you get sweaty, uh, it can be really nice to have something that's not going to break. It's got touch controls built in. You can control volume. You can talk to your assistant, whether you're rocking with Alexa, Google Assistant, or you're slumming it with Siri, you have access to all of them just by quick touching. They also go into your ears. They've got adjustable little gels. It's actually gonna be noise isolating, so you're not gonna be able to hear stuff going on around you. So it's great for an airplane. You got sort of loud engine noise. You just wanna watch your movie in peace. Battery life, obviously important. Uh, you get 16 hours of total battery life, four hours uh, on the Indies themselves, an additional 12 through the carrying case. Also got a bunch of different colors available. Got indigo blue, you got mint and black, so if you wanna flex some color options, Skull Candy's got you covered. So if you wanna check them out and you want a pair of solid wireless headphones for half the price of the competition, check them out, we'll link to them down below. So it's been almost a year since our initial review of the Note 9 and a lot has changed. Uh, it's had almost 12 software updates, it advanced in versions of Android, a big issue that I had the first go around with the Note 9 was I was getting really slow LTE speeds, which shouldn't have been the case. It has more band support. It should have been faster than it was. And that appears to have been fixed with software. In areas of, of my home area where I was getting slower data speeds a year ago, it was now much faster. And that could be a result of, of T-Mobile's network you know, getting better. Um, but I'm also putting some credit to the software on the phone. That seems to have improved drastically. All right, so my kids are with my wife. We're gonna try the Haunted Mansion for the first time. Um, we've just told them it's spooky and not scary. Are you guys excited for the Haunted Mansion? Yeah. What part are you most excited about? The spooky. The spooky? What else? What else are you excited about? Um, the ride again. Spooky. I love seeing some ghosts. We go. <laughs> what do the ghosts say? Ooh. Ooh, okay, let's go see some ghosts. Wasn't sure if it was gonna be a total disaster 
at the Haunted Mansion or end up with two screaming kids and have to like exit the ride. Uh, but they were troopers. They made it through it. They enjoyed it. They liked it. They said it wasn't too scary for them. Was it good? Was it scary? Was it scary? No. Three guy high five. One high five. Yeah, not scary. I mean, brave thumbs up. So brave. Three brave dudes. It's always interesting to see how quickly tech changes. The Note 9, when it came out, looked and felt cutting edge. And now in a year, it's become commonplace to have phones with no bezels, to have cutout displays and cameras that pop out, in-screen fingerprint readers. So the design of the Note, somehow in about 12 months, now seems outdated to me. A fingerprint reader on the back feels like yesterday is tech. So that's something that was really apparent when I picked up the phone again. So some stuff still stayed the same. The phone got really warm. And at Disneyland, maybe it was 95 degrees, but I was using it a couple days before and I was watching some heavy video or playing a game. I did notice the phone got warmer than what I've been used to with other devices. So still something to consider with the Note 9, but it didn't knock performance at all. I still absolutely adore the fast charge that Samsung offers. I was able to get almost 40% in just a few minutes. That is amazing and awesome. Every phone should have it. I still don't find myself using the S Pen. Hardly at all, I know that's a big reason why people get the Note. The few times I used it, it was handy. It was mostly just to you know, write a few notes or let my kids draw a picture on the screen. It's there, it's cool to use it as a shutter uh, button, but I still didn't use the S Pen as much as I had on, on previous gen. Huge improvement on the Note 9 versus the 8. The speakers are really good, and it was obvious the first time I used the phone, the speakers were definitely better. And having used a bunch of phones in between my testing period with the Note 9, I appreciated how good those speakers were. And the microphones also built in tended to sound really good and did a nice job cutting out ambient noise, especially at a crowded place like Disneyland. So we live in a really cool age where you can like, physically or digitally capture memories. You can capture these moments in time with you, your family, and your loved one. And there are very few I guess, devices that can capture that, kind of like the Note can, just due to versatility of the cameras. You got your standard camera, you got your wide angle, your telephoto. You've got everything that you need depending on the setting. So it was awesome to be able to take a wide angle video and let my kids sort of talk about what they're seeing and also being able to see Disneyland behind them, sort of zoom in on details at Galaxy's Edge and just take regular pictures. It was cool to have, and I really like the versatility that the Note 9 offers. And it's nice to see other manufacturers sort of jumping on board with those multiple cameras. And Samsung wasn't the first, but every time I use a phone that has multiple lenses, I'm reminded of how nice it is for those times when I need it. So we're there for maybe like four and a half, five hours. Not a huge amount of time, but it was a fun way to spend the day with my family. It was a good summer day for the kids. And hopefully it was kind of a memory that they'll have with them. And I think when I look back on technology, I tend to associate it with memories. You know, what pictures did I take with this phone? When I go and look back on Time Hop, for example. And when I look back on my time with the Note 9, this is what I'll remember. I'll remember the tests of, you know, the telephoto or the camera or video tests that I did. That'll fade into the background of just another phone. But I'll remember Disneyland and taking videos of my kids with it and asking if they were excited to go and seeing what they thought when they saw the characters face to face. That was a really cool experience. And that's something that I think will stay with me forever.